healing is changing a lot in the war within and a lot of that has to do with the tanking situation but your philosophy and mindset and your approach to healing and how you sequence your spells will be changing regardless of what healer you choose um, whether you like it or not just because of that situation alone almost but what we're going to be doing today is taking that into consideration as well as how uh, all of the healers have performed in certain situations and we're going to construct a little tier list now this is not a power ranking and this is also not a tier list showing which is the easiest healer to actually pilot in the war within this is going to be a tier list based on how difficult each spec will find it to get both cutting edge and keystone hero so once again what we're going to factor into these decisions are how good they are at tank healing and spread healing in a mythic plus environment what they bring to a raid like raid buffs utility things like that as well as their throughput potential we will factor in a little bit how easy the spec will be to pilot but not that much i will make a separate tier list uh, for that specifically and then finally we're going to factor in different circumstances which you will you know see once we get into the evoker situation i'm sure you can guess what that is which let's just go ahead and kick things off with Preservation Evoker, which by the way, this whole video idea, this concept was submitted by Ceiling Panda, one of my favorite viewers. So thank you so much for this idea. I love making niche tier lists and um, I love talking about every single healer. So let's make this quick. Preservation Evoker is the perfect example of a healer where it's not the best decision to only discuss power level because this healer has proven time and time again that it is a throughput machine and that is only getting better in both forms of content with flame shaper and mythic plus primarily and then chrono warden in raid because in raid you can further enhance your already super powerful ramps with something like temporal burst to just gain a bunch of haste pull down recovery rate and just go crazy not to mention they already have one of the strongest ramps in the game that is kind of based on their HP, which you guys know there's been a lot of nerfs to HP based scaling spells and how they life bind their Emerald Communion that only feels stronger in the War Within if, I, if I'm being totally honest. And they also have an excellent rotation of short cooldowns like Spirit Bloom, which can get down to a 20 second cooldown. Temporal Anomaly, a 14 second cooldown, crazy button. Dream Breath is crazy, especially in Mythic Plus, when you can just boost its healing and then collapse all that healing with Consume Flames. And just repeat and duplicate all of your empowered Dream Breaths with Stasis, an insane one and a half minute cooldown. So they have a lot of the tools and can get the healing done and can put out a large amount of healing in a raid environment. And when it comes to protecting a tank, they also have some insane tools. So time dilation is, in my opinion, one of the better mitigation spells. Um, it works pretty well with Brewmaster and Blood Death Knight and how it can delay the damage that they take. So it works pretty cool with Stagger and also just works well with the new Blood Death Knight, which both of those are looking very strong. So I believe that's worth mentioning and pretty good look on their part. Also, Golden Hour is an exceptional spell spell or an exceptional talent um, when you talk about tank healing so saving a reversion charge for your tank for when they take a big smack um golden hour just just procs a big heal off of that and then you you can get a lot of cleave healing onto the party when doing that with temporal anomaly so they just have a lot of tools to get the healing done that's not the issue. You can also roll a ton of hots on your tank with echoed dream breaths, echoed reversions, and just have a bunch of hots ticking to kind of give them more effective health for whenever they take a smack, a lot of that damage is gonna be healed back before the next smack occurs. So they just have a very good healing profile. However, it still just has very large range limitations, which just make it more difficult of a class to play. However, at the top end level, if you're pushing for those those um, achievements like cutting edge, that shouldn't be too much of an issue because your team, your group should kind of understand your limitations at that point. So where that would be a bigger talking point in another type of tier list, the biggest talking point in this tier list is gonna be the other circumstances that I mentioned and that being flat out augmentation evoker. Augmentation just kind of does everything better. Like when you try to form a Mythic Plus group or a raid comp, you 
when you need an evoker, you choose augmentation. And especially with all of the tank nerfs, they are going to provide so much more survivability to your tank uh, when paired with any other healer than if you take a preservation and a third DPS. A lot of groups in Mythic Plus and in raid environments are going to be looking to put a lot more emphasis on having augmentation, which I know who would have thought that it could have gotten more emphasized. But yeah, that's just a fact. Also, if you're thinking, well, why don't groups take an augmentation and a preservation, which is likely what you're going to see at those top end keys if you do decide to play a preservation evoker. But one of the big issues is how like kicking has worked in the War Within beta. You can't really chain CC things with like leg sweep, ring of peace, like things like that. Um, eventually, they'll just keep recasting their spells or a lot of the casters will. So when you look at the actual interrupt that healers have, Quell is not the best. It's a 40 second cooldown, which is just brutal, especially if you use it right after one of your allies uses a kick. If you're in a pug environment, um, it just it feels disgustingly brutal and punishing. So those circumstances are going to make it a lot harder for you to find mythic plus groups in general. And then and as far as raid spots go, you're not going to be turned away unless the group already has like three augmentations. But even then, in a raid environment, you kind of provide something different. So if you can meet the throughput requirements to get onto a raid team, you're not going to struggle that much. But as far as Mythic Plus goes, it's going to be a lot harder. You're going to sit in queues for a lot longer at those top end key levels when you're trying to get to that 3k or 2500 threshold. So for that reason alone, Evoker lands in the might struggle with one tier because it will struggle a lot more with Mythic Plus than with raiding. But like I said, it has all the tools. It just has the same tools as, as an augmentation Evoker. Next up in the discussion is Priest. And I'm lumping both of these kind, kind of together and I'm going to be ranking them kind of together. Because as a Priest healer, technically you're only as bad as your best healing spec. So if Disc Priest is so good and Holy Priest is so bad, you can you can theoretically just swap to Disc Priest um, and play the better of the two. Now, Disc Priest has been struggling a little bit on the beta. And part of that is just because in this new tank healing world, they do struggle a bit with their spot healing. However, with the cleave healing, the AoE healing, they are as strong as ever with the hero talent tree like Voidweaver, just adding a lot more damage to them and more atonement healing. So in that aspect, they kind of have gotten stronger with their, their five-man healing. But as far as um, tank survivability, they do have a lot of excellent tools. Do not get me wrong. They have barrier to help out the tank. They have double pain suppression as well as double grip, which I've had a spicy play where I grip, use a gate, and then grip again. Pretty sick um, to help the, the, the tank kite, which is absolutely going to be a thing um, in top end keys. So they do have tools in that aspect to help your tank stay alive. But a lot of the tanks aren't really struggling uh, as far as mitigation, as much as they're struggling to get their health bar back up. And yes, you could argue that you could just mitigate all that damage so you don't have to heal back up. But in my uh, testing, it's just been more of an issue for some of the healers to get their health bar from like 20% after big hits up to full in time for the next giant hit. So in that aspect, Disc Priest does struggle just due to a, a lack of tools, especially if you do opt for Void Weaver, which is on paper probably the more powerful option of the two but what's going to end up happening is they might go void weaver in a raid environment because like i said you're just going to get a lot more atonement healing because of your bonus damage on a boss but in mythic plus they might be forced to take the the just just rough oracle hero talent tree uh, specifically because of how things like Premonition of Piety can spread some of your overhealing on your, your DPS players onto your tank. So if you're doing a, a big AoE ramp during a, a, like a big tank damage scenario, which happens a lot because your ramp is on a very short cooldown, then a lot of that bonus uh, extra healing can spill over into the tank and help that way. 
Also, Premonition of Solace is excellent because it can put a giant shield on top of a tank. So now you have more time to top them up with your AoE healing. And as you're moving all the health bars um, up at once, that shield is taking the damage to keep the tank from dying in that situation. But once again, all of this is literally just conceding a better hero talent tree in favor of tools that your kit is just lacking. So in that sense, you probably will still struggle at the top end of keys unless you're in a very organized group and you can kind of like talk through your pain sup um, uses and stuff and kind of make sure your DPS is okay with you not pain supping them so you can hit the tank with both charges. But in that sense, you're, you're definitely going to struggle a lot more. Also, this is one of the specs where I have to mention difficulty of the class. Um, once again, this plays so much different from other healers and how it heals. And in a, an environment where single target healing, spot healing, massive spot healing into a tank is so much more important than it used to be, the healer that specializes in moving all health bars at one time is going to struggle a bit more. Now, don't get me wrong. They're not doing like horrible throughput and raid they also have some pretty good utility and pi and like i said dome earlier and also just mitigation from their atonements if you talent that way they also have fine throughput but when we talk about their throughput in a raid environment i, th I think it's more important to first discuss holy priest so as far as holy priest goes in mythic plus right now in the beta it is kind of bugged your halo just kind of pulls half the dungeon so we can't really fully test it to its full power without making some errors or mistakes or playing around those bugs. Um, however, we can still get a pretty good general idea of its performance in that environment. But in Raid, its healing, its throughput is actually exceptional. I mean, you take Archon and you just like spam your Halos off cooldown, it just provides so much throughput. You already have insane healer cooldowns in Salve and in Divine Hymn and in Symbol of Hope. I mean, you just bring so much. On top of all that, you can be your group's fort buff if you only have one priest. You also bring PI. You just bring so much utility to a group that it's kind of insane for a raid environment. Yes, Dis Priest shares a lot of this utility, but the cooldowns of Holy Priest kind of edge it out and the throughput potential kind of edge it out. Um, now, it's not going to be putting out as much healing as Mistweaver, at least currently, or as much as Resto Druid, at least currently. Um, not even Shaman, but once again, a lot of its uh, strength lies in its utility in that department. So in, in Raid, you probably will see more Holy Priest than Disc's Priest, at least if they kind of make it to live as they are right now. In Mythic Plus, it is a slightly different story. You are spamming more flash heals into tanks and stuff, and your tier set actually works very well with that. You, every now and then, your heals and flash heals will have a chance to just happen again at a reduced rate. So your single target spam healing is, is totally fine. You also provide great hot coverage and you're incentivized to do so with your prayer of mendings and also you'll get some free renews. And thanks to your tier set, you're gonna be getting a, a couple more holy words per dungeon. It's nothing insane, but it's, it's, it's good enough, um, honestly. So you're gonna be having a lot more of an easy time healing a dungeon as a holy priest. But one thing that I just keep talking about in this video is tank healing in a Mythic Plus environment. And holy priest, although it can heal health bars pretty easily, um, it does struggle a lot in the sense that it's very GCD uh, dense, I guess, in, in tank casts. You are gonna be spamming holy or flash heals into your tank a lot more than you would like so you just have a lot less time to do a lot of other things like set up your hots or do damage um, also you just lack uh, an exceptional tank defensive when this priest has two charges of pain sup you as a holy priest only has one charge of guardian spirit and if you use it at the wrong time you're just wasting a three minute cooldown oracle also provides you with a lot of the same tools um, however, in a raid environment, they are still looking to go with Archon, at least from what I've seen on logs, because of just how much Halo heals. Um, so you, you do lose out on a lot of utility that Oracle can bring, like that massive shield. And But it's just also one thing that hasn't been discussed a lot is that Premonition is a timing-based cooldown, meaning that if, if a fight lasts for like two minutes, you know, that rarely ever happens. But if one does, you're only going to see 
premonition of clairvoyance like once or maybe not even at all in the fight um so that does have to be taken into consideration as far as forming a raid group and a mythic plus group go however raid groups are going to look for a priest most likely in the healing spot as well as in the shadow priest slot so you're 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 not going to be turned away from guilds that don't have a priest already However, if you're going to be on a raiding team, they are going to be much more likely to want you to play Holy Priest just because of the throughput potential and the utility that they bring. However, I don't think anyone's going to ask you to swap from a Disc Priest to a Holy to form a raid group because, once again, they have a lot of strong utility as well. It's just currently in the current state of things, Holy Priest just does a bit more. Whereas in a Mythic Plus environment, people are going to be a lot more excited and willing to take a Disc Priest into their raid group because of how much they're going to be able to pair with something like an Augmentation Evoker to extend your tank's effective health bar by miles. So for that reason, for, for those reasons I should say, they're both going to land and might struggle with one because I don't think you're going to have an easy ride in both forms of content, but I also think that each of them kind of specialize in one form of content or the other, depending on how their kits get tuned between now and when the War Within drops. But I don't think you're going to struggle in both or have a great time in both for either of them. So if you main a priest, you can swap between the specs depending on what they're strongest with and have a great time there. But as far as isolating each of the specs, I think they both do land in this tier. Next up, let's move on to Resto Druid. Now, at the start of the beta, Resto Druid was looking pretty dog. So a lot of the logs that you've probably seen in other videos where they look over that, that log spreadsheet probably haven't shown the full power of Resto Druid because ever since all of their buffs, and I mean they got a lot of buffs, they have been performing pretty well actually in both forms of content. So when you look at their healing profile, they have one that excels in almost every form of content. You can spread rejuves, put down your efflorescence, have your life bloom, bloom or blossom in that efflorescence, cast wild growth, get a lot of AoE healing and throughput in a, a mythic environment for that steady throughput. You also can get massive ramps with flourish and even tranquility in a raid environment. So they have a lot of the throughput um, required to, to be a good pick for throughput's sake in a myth in a raid environment. Also, ever since the buffing of Harmony of the Grove, you see that kind of get taken to the next level. All of that passive throughput just getting buffed by 6% instead of the old 3% when you have one of your Grove Guardians active is very nice in raid. Also, you can have very explosive ramps when you can spawn all three of your, your Grove Guardians at once, and I think you can even get a fourth by going into tree form if you decide to take that in a raid environment. So you can boost your healing with that plus flourish by a ton for massive burst healing instances and not to mention the healing that your grove guardians themselves are going to be doing in that sense so for those reasons i don't think you're going to have a hard time finding a spot in a, a mythic raiding environment i don't know if this healer is going to be good enough at just raw throughput to make it onto like bleeding edge guilds or, or raid groups but as far as cudging edge goes there will very rarely be any groups that will turn you away as a Resto Druid, especially because you bring some very powerful utility in the form of a, an exceptional raid buff, Mark of the Wild, giving everyone versatility, which when you're pushing for cutting edge, a lot of times, I mean, think of how many times like someone has survived at one HP in a, a mythic raid fight or something. This just furthers that. Um, it also boosts everyone's damage, everyone's healing. It's just such a good raid buff so every raid group is going to need at least one most mythic plus groups are also going to be looking to try to try to squeeze in a mark of the wild buff however guardian druid is looking to be actually very powerful in the war within so if if groups do opt for a guardian druid or if your pug group already has a guardian druid you're just like the evoker situation you're likely to probably be turned away in favor of like a priest or a shaman for their buffs to stack on top of mark of the wild however it in all other instances you're kind of a shoe into a group because also you bring rebirth which is a, a great battle res to have in a group 
They also, one thing that I don't think is talked about enough with Rester Druid, I, but one thing I never hear talked about is how variable their healing profile is. So you can it's, think about a Mythic Plus environment. If there's group-wide damage coming out, you put down Efflorescence, you spam Rejuves on everyone, you make sure you have your Life Blooms on the two targets, like yourself and possibly the tank, and then you cast Wild Growth and Flourish, boom, AoE healing out the wazoo. But if you need tank healing, which you will definitely need tank healing, you kind of do the same exact thing in order to get all of those hots onto your tank. You then can put Scenarian Ward on your tank. You can summon a Grove Guardian who's going to be casting some nourishes into your tank. You can put Regrowth on your tank. I mean, you can stack so many hots onto your tank. And the reason why hots are very valuable for a tank um, in order for, to extend their health bar more than like maybe a spot heal cast is because if a tank is taking like 20 hits from like five different mobs, like hit, 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 like you, they're getting hit often, then all of those hots are going to spill into their health bar and top them up slowly. And as opposed to like a hard cast of like healing surge, for example, where a lot of that healing surge will go into overhealing. So all of these hots are going to extend the effect of health of your tank and then not to mention you have a very good a very solid and reliable tank defensive or external and iron bark 20 percent mitigation for 12 seconds is enough to get them between any of their cooldowns so you give a tank 12 seconds worth of mitigation and they're going to be chilling um it'll give them enough time to get like their purifying brew back and just things like that or build up a big hard strike or between hard strikes so this, they are an excellent option for both forms of content. However, I don't think they're like S tier in either one. And once again, they do have the limitation of um, they're going to have to compete and raid with other very powerful throughput healers. And they also have a little civil war going on in the Druid department with Guardian Druid and Mythic Plus. So, so for those reasons, I think they won't have any problems at all getting both of these achievements, but they aren't going to excel. You're not going to just get rapid fire into Mythic Plus groups. You might get turned away from a few in favor of like a Lust healer, like a Resto Shaman, which we haven't talked about yet, or um, something like a Holy Paladin, or any groups that already have a Guardian Druid in them. So for that reason, I think they're a very safe pick, but you do have to know that there are going to be some situations where you might get turned away just because of what you're playing. It sucks that people do that, but that is that that is most likely going to be the case for Resto Druid. Next up, we have to talk about the new and revamped Holy Paladin, which... I'll just go ahead and tell you guys, it's looking like an excellent pick for The War Within. Both of its hero talents are very powerful and both are pretty applicable in both um, forms of content like Raid and Mythic Plus. This spec also brings a ton of utility. It is one of the two battle resing healers. And if we talk about a Mythic Plus group first, that is where the, the battle res nature is even more important. Not to mention they just bring passive mitigation to the tank as well as active mitigation. They also bring Blessing of Sacrifice, which if you need to just save your tank or bail him out, then you can put that on them. They have an immunity for a lot of mechanics. They're just a utility Swiss army knife. I know you've heard that term a thousand times, but it's because they really do have a tool for almost any situation. With all of the buffs to their shock healing from like Word of Glory and Holy Shock especially, they are also doing a ton of single target healing. And one thing that's very powerful with that healing profile in a Mythic Plus envi environment is that you can either go double beacon, have a beacon on your tank and on one of your ranged DPS maybe, and just spam heals on everyone else or into your tank and just get cleave healing, or you can go Beacon of Virtue and pop this every 15 seconds, spam your shock heals into your tank and get massive healing onto the rest of the party. Both options are exceptional. Oh, and not to mention, you can just put Beacon on two of your DPS or yourself in a DPS and plan to just spam heals into your tank. It really just depends on the dungeon that you're going into and the type of tank that you have, how you want to play around that. But having that option or the, that variety of options is extremely powerful in this hostile tank healing environment. Also, all of the buffs to your Holy Shock play very well into Barrier of Faith, which acts as kind of a rolling shield 
on your tank. And if you pair that with the Hero Talent Tree Lightsmith, if you give the shield to the tank, that's just more effective health that you're giving your tank a lot more survivability that your tank has that a lot of other healers just can't afford to give to their tank. So all of these tools to allow your tank to survive play very well with a spec like Augmentation Evoker. With Augmentation and Holy Paladin, you then have the duo um, utility army knife of Lust and B-Res, um, as well as whatever your tank brings. Like if you have a, a Guardian Druid tank, then they also have another backup B-Res and they have other buffs as well. So this plays very well into what a lot of groups want to be doing in Mythic Plus. So this will likely not have any struggles finding a group in Mythic Plus, especially if they stay at the power level that they are at now or somewhere near that. Also, not to mention, I talked about uh, Lightsmith a bit, but Herald of the Sun also gives a lot of tools for tank survivability. So if you put your Dawnlight hot buffs on your tank, that's a lot more healing that they have. Also, Eternal Flame is just a, a better version of Word of Glory when adding that extra hot adds a lot less overhealing onto a tank because they're going to be getting hit like every few seconds or every second. So that rolling hot will just look very nice on a tank's health bar. And as far as Mythic Plus damage goes, I haven't mentioned this for any other healer, but it is worth mentioning that with Lightsmith, you just give one of your DPS a sacred weapon, and boom, you've done good damage. So in that aspect, you're going to get good value for almost free as long as you plan that button around your DPS's cooldowns to a small extent. Um, but outside of that, I mean, like I said, this, this spec just has everything excellent throughput and in raiding the healing profile that uh holy paladin brings to a raid group is so desirable having massive shock heals at almost every instant of a fight is so good in a raid environment because it really saves lives left and right you ask your raid leader what healer they want in their healing core most of the time they're going to tell you holy paladin not to mention they bring devo aura and i haven't mentioned this yet but so far prop paladin's not looking too spicy um but rep paladin is looking pretty good so it, you you won't have any limitations based on what your raid comp looks like there ideally a spec like this with such a good healing profile so many utility buttons so much mitigation added to a raid fight you wouldn't want them to give as much throughput as they're giving right now, but that's just an added bonus. So they are a shoe in for any raid group and for most Mythic Plus groups. So I, I have to give it that they're gonna have an easy time. If all things remain as they are right now, they're gonna have an easy time in the War Within getting both achievements. Now let's move on to the best healer in the whole world, Miss Weaver Monk. You guys know I'm a little biased toward this because I do play it, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This is looking like a pretty good Miss Weaver tier. I don't know if it's going to be quite Dragonflight Season 3 dominance. I, I really don't think that we're going to be quite there. However, Miss Weaver has gotten some excellent new tools and a lot of small minor things that add up to be a very good healing profile for Mythic Plus especially, and also raiding. So as far as the, the ease of the spec, it is technically getting a little more difficult in its rotation because gone are the days currently, as things stand now, gone are the days where you are just gonna spin and crank kick spam for good AOE healing in a Mythic Plus environment you do have a, a bit more of a technical rotation that relies on proc chances on getting Rising Sun Kick resets. So in that aspect, it is kind of getting a little bit harder in Mythic Plus, but that's a very small asterisk, uh, especially when you kind of zoom out and look at the overall play of the spec. It's looking like a Chi G build will be a little bit more viable in raid, or actually a lot more viable in raid than it has been in the past. And even if not even chi -Gi, just a Jade Fire Stomp, Ancient Teachings, Resplendent Mist, like Rising Mist kind of build, will still be pretty solid in raiding, which is important when you talk about the ease of the spec, because throughout Dragonflight, we were playing two completely different builds in raiding in Mythic Plus. But if that's the case, you can get away with taking a similar build into both forms of, of content. And that just overall makes the spec as a whole easier to learn. Let's talk about the tools that they have at their kit. And a lot of the discussion lands around Conduit of the Celestials, 
So this is looking exceptional in both raiding and mythic plus. In mythic plus it does pretty solid damage as well as it, it's kind of like a mini trink for for Mistweaver. So it can bridge the gap between your Shailun's gifts, your Chi-Gis, your revivals. It's just a fourth mini cooldown that you have at your disposal. So very solid button added into an already very good uh, cooldown rotation. Also, when it comes to tank healing, Mistweaver actually has a very good time. I mean, ideally you want to have Enveloping Mist up on the tank at most points just to boost the healing that you're going to be doing to them. It's also a very powerful hot that you have at your disposal which you can easily get this six second hot up to 14 seconds thanks to rising mist and mist wrap so that just reduces the amount of times that you would have to cast it onto the tank to theoretically have a 100 percent uptime on the tank of this hot however one of the new tools coming to mistweaver actually makes this a lot more achievable and that is strength of the black ox so whenever Zwen comes out and helps you, you then have Nitzau ready to come and help you. And how to proc Nitzau is you just have to cast an Enveloping Mist, and then he will put a small shield on everyone in the party, which this Enveloping Mist, your next Enveloping Mist cast, will be reduced in cast time by a half. It's just easier to get this Enveloping Mist out. Um, so that play just is exceptional. And not to mention, if you cast the every single Strength of the Black Ox proc, on your tank, you're shielding the rest of your group. So it's just such a good healing profile, putting a massive hot on your tank while also shielding your, your, your DPS and yourself. It's just, it's such a good addition to the rotation and it plays very well in this tank healing world. Also, one other very important thing to mention, like I said earlier, the spinning crane kick spamming currently is kind of out of the discussion because of all of the mastery buffs that we've received a lot of the mastery overhauling changes thanks to the removal of essence font which this healing profile i would argue is actually better for tank healing than a spinning crane kick spamming environment because if you're just spinning crank spinning crane kicking every pool there's a there's like a billion little tiny hot ticks into your tank or or healing ticks into your tank from that but that can also be spread across your group however if you get your mastery kicks up like if you're if you're doing a good kicking rotation you're going to kick up so many gust of mist mastery procs and a lot more of those are going to land into your tank and that's just a lot of solid passive tank healing on top of the enveloping mist that you're hopefully going to be able to to keep up at all times on your tank so overall it goes without saying i think it's going to be a pretty good mist weaver tier for mythic plus i don't know if they're going to be at the top of the meta like they were but i think they're going to land somewhere near the top thanks to the, all of the new tools that they have at their disposal as far as rating goes, it's still kind of up in the air which of like three different builds we're going to be playing in a mythic rating environment. However, all three of them are very powerful and put up very good throughput. And not to mention, monks, monks do bring some pretty solid raid buffs. So I think as a Mistweaver, you're kind of a shoe in for rating environments. But as far as Mythic Plus environments go, you're never a bad option. It's just very important to note that you are lacking a bit of the utility that some of the other healers have. So for example, you don't bring any massive buffs. You do bring Mystic Touch, which, which does buff physical damage. But the DPS meta does kind of hinge on how powerful that buff is. So if you bring that to like a caster group, like say a Shadow Priest, a fire mage and like some warlock or something or an augmentation you're gonna get a lot less value than if like warrior rogue and you know a, a wind walker were meta i guess that's a bad example but you know what i mean you're just getting a lot less value than you could so for that sense you do bring a lot less than some of the other healers but honestly it's it's really not that big of a deal you have lust from your augmentation you're likely to have b res in the tank slot and maybe even a dps slot if warlocks are looking good so for that reason, you're really going to have no problems at all as a Mistweaver getting both of these achievements, in my opinion. If the discussion were title pushing, you would probably have a lot more of an issue in Mythic Plus. But um, since we're just talking about like K KSH or KSM, whatever it is, then yeah, you're just not going to have any issues as a Mistweaver. Your kit looks excellent in the War Within. And let's finally move on to Restoration Shaman. Unfortunately, Restoration Shaman wasn't really seen that much uh, throughout Dragonflight, or as much as I, you know, I think we were used to seeing it in Shadowlands, 
But that script is flipped in The War Within. They are looking excellent. And a lot of that is due to Sky Fury, their new raid buff or party buff, which just gives mastery and a lot more auto attack damage. This buff will be sought after in every single raid group because it's going to equate to a lot more damage and a bit more healing as well. Now, will Restoration be the spec of choice when trying to get a Sky Fury buffer? Honestly, I think they very well could. I mean, they have so much utility. If, if Holy Paladins are the Mythic plus Swiss Army Knife, Resto Shamans are kind of seen as the raiding Swiss Army Knives as well as they're just both forms of content in Swiss Army Knife. They have like so many different healing cooldowns and healing Tide Totem, Spirit Link Totem. They have Ancestral Guidance. They have Ascendance. I mean, they have so many different healing cooldowns that they can either stack on top of one another or spread throughout a fight. They also have Cloud Burst that can utilize all of that healing from their bursty cooldowns to then create a second burst after the fact. So they have a, a really excellent healing profile in a raid environment. Not to mention, both of their hero talent trees I've seen be successful in raiding, but I think I've seen Totemic a bit more successful um, across the board. And with the changes to Surging Totem, it makes it a bit more easy to get value out of the boosted healing rain that comes from this. Also, just so many free chain heals. Every time you set down a Cloud Burst or a Healing Stream, whichever you decide to go with, your Mana Tides casts one, like all of your healing-based totems cast one. So you're just getting a bunch of free cleave healing. So I really doubt that you're going to have a hard time finding a raid group um, take you as a Resto Shaman. Most raid groups will because they just can kind of do it all they also put put out a lot of healing they have good variable healing profiles if you need more aoe healing you can go into like a chain heal build and play around with that in your totems or if you just need someone if you're maybe you have like two resto druids and like a holy priest or something in your raid group and you need someone to do some spot healing you can utilize all the different changes that have come to like healing surge for example for better spot healing as well as all of your riptide talents like you can just build this spec however you want, and it, it from what I've seen, it can perform well with almost any build. Not to mention how easily you can get a bunch of Riptides out if you do end up taking Farseer, thanks to having three charges and other different ways to duplicate your Riptides, and then just get massive value from Primordial Wave to add yet another cooldown, kind of like mini cooldown, in your raid arsenal. So as far as raiding go, like I said, it's kind of a shoe in you, you're not going to struggle to find raid groups and you it, it has the power to get cutting edge now moving into mythic plus it's kind of a same story one of their biggest issues throughout dragonflight was how weak astral shift their defensive was but it's seen some changes it's a lot it makes you a lot more tanky and you as as a whole can survive a lot more than you used to be able to so that is a big issue that they no longer really have especially if you take like earth elemental and some other wacky things you're just more survivable as a whole which was just a big hole in your kit i guess also just do not struggle at all in terms of five man healing content once again if you take totemic shaman you just have so many free chain heals just zipping around throughout your party every now and then if you talent this way you can have empowered chain heals from yourself to just get massive five man healing but the very important thing that i just i don't know why i never see this talked about when you when you look at resto shaman discussions or maybe i'm just like looking at in the wrong spots but earth shield is exceptional earth shield not only boosts your healing to them by five uh, by 20 percent but it also funnels healing into them after they take damage just kind of mid it like after the fact mitigating damage which is weird but kind of just adding health back whenever they take damage kind of like a scenarian ward does in a way but very importantly you're just giving five percent damage mitigation to your tank so it just that on top of giving them mastery on top of having spirit link totem to kind of help save their life and you're just doing boosted healing into them you have such an excellent tank healing um kit at your disposal it's not necessarily tank healing but you just have a lot of tools to help out your tank you also have 
Thunderstorm to boop things away. You have in-cap totem to stun everything. You just have so much at your disposal. Also, if they're standing in your surging totem or in your healing rain with a riptide on them, you have healing stream totem healing into them every now and then, and you're casting a healing surge or a healing wave into them, they feel unkillable. I'm not even kidding. You just have so much healing um, in your kit to, to be able to deal with the, the tank disparities that it just, it this healer feels like a shoe in in a Mythic Plus environment. Not to mention, you also bring your buff, your, your party-wide buff into a raid environment, but you also bring Lust, you bring Windrush, you bring an AoE stun, like I said, you have a ranged short, dura or short cooldown interrupt, you have excellent five-man healing, you have excellent spot healing. This healer, it as long as their power level stays at where it is right now, they honestly have all the tools to dominate the, quote, meta. Um, therefore, you just kind of have to put them up in the easy tier. Now, these tiers themselves aren't ordered at all, but I do think I'm very happy with how everything is, is placed. I don't think you're going to have a hard time getting at least one of these achievements on any of the healers. As far as each of these healers' power levels is concerned, I think that's a different discussion for a different day, maybe after or right around the time that the War Within actually drops. But right now, it's still the beta, things are still volatile, and things are still subject to change. So that's why when I did this discussion today, I wanted to talk about their kits and the environment that we're going to be thrown into um, as opposed to their power level as much. So I hope that you guys appreciate that because I, you know, I don't want to be dishonest with you guys and mislead you guys by making a power ranking tier list because literally things could change tomorrow and then that whole tier list would be obsolete and you guys would be misled. And plus, you guys know me, if you've been watching me for a long time, I like to make different tier lists than just like, hey, this healer's better than this one or this is the meta. So I like to make, you know, different ones asking different questions. But guys, that's going to do it for this video. It's been long enough. I'm sorry. Whenever I talk about all seven healing specs in one video, it's hard not for it to go long. But as you can imagine, this video took so much time to make. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure and like the video before you leave. Also, double check that you're subscribed because we are like coming in hot on 10,000. And I know YouTube likes to just randomly unsubscribe you from people that you've been subscribed to for a while so double check your subbed but guys that's gonna do it for this video a huge shout out to the patrons of this channel i would not be able to make youtube videos if it weren't for these guys so thank you so much to the guys on the screen and if you want to see your name alongside these guys then make sure and check out that patreon link down in the description below but guys thank you so much for watching this video hopefully i didn't make anyone upset i'll see you in the next one until then take care